The sun hung low in the sky as John and I ventured deeper into the remote wilderness, our horses carrying us further away from civilization with every step. We had embarked on this horseback camping trip to rekindle our connection with nature and each other. The rhythmic clopping of the hooves on the rugged trail was soothing and the scent of pine trees filled the air. After a few days of peaceful riding and nights under the stars, we decided to explore a side trail we'd stumbled upon. The narrow path wound through thick underbrush and twisted trees, a stark contrast to the well-worn trail we'd been following. As we pressed on, my heart quickened with a mix of excitement and unease. Hours passed and the trail grew rougher, but we couldn't shake the feeling of being drawn down this path, drawn deeper into the forest. Then, suddenly, we rounded a bend and came upon a chilling sight. A small clearing revealed a gruesome scene. The ground was saturated with blood and a broken, battered body lay sprawled out before us. Flies buzzed in a frenzy and the stench of decay was overpowering. My stomach churned and I felt bile rise in my throat. John, his face contorted in shock, dismounted his horse and I followed suit. The victim, a man in his 40s, lay in a tattered shirt, his lifeless eyes staring blankly at the sky. Blood had pooled around his head, matted hair sticky and crimson. His hands were contorted in a gruesome display of agony. It was clear this was no accident. It was murder. Fear clawed at my chest as I realized the gravity of the situation. We were days away from the nearest town, with no cell service to call for help. We scanned the area, searching for any signs of the killer or a way out. With trembling hands, John reached for his hunting knife, his eyes never leaving the gruesome scene before us. Every rustle in the bushes, every distant snap of a twig, sent shivers down our spines. Were the killer or killers still nearby, lurking in the shadows? We needed to make a choice, stay and investigate, or flee from this nightmare and return to civilization. But the thought of leaving the scene unanswered haunted us. We were already days from town, and what if there were others in danger? As we cautiously approached the victim, we noticed a trail of footprints leading away from the body. Someone had left in a hurry, perhaps the killer. Our instincts told us to follow the trail, to find answers, but fear held us back. The forest seemed to close in around us, the once friendly trees now menacing sentinels. Dread hung in the air as we followed the footprints deeper into the woods. Each step felt heavier than the last, and the forest grew darker, even though the sun had not yet set. Time seemed to warp in that place, as if we had stepped into a realm of eternal twilight. The footprints led us to a makeshift campsite hidden beneath a dense thicket of trees. A small fire pit surrounded by charred logs indicated recent activity but there was no sign of the persons who left the footprints. As we inspected the area, a cold realization washed over us. The killer might still be here, watching us, waiting for the right moment. We didn't feel safe, but we couldn't turn back now. We had stumbled upon a nightmarish puzzle and we needed to solve it. Our survival depended on it. With our hearts pounding and our senses on high alert, we delved further into the mysteries of the forest, determined to uncover the truth, even if it meant descending deeper into terror. As we continued our cautious exploration of the makeshift campsite, we found a few scattered belongings strewn across the forest floor. A backpack, torn and discarded, contained personal items, a wallet, some clothing, snacks, and a journal. We hesitated but decided to examine the journal for clues. The journal revealed itself to be a haunting account of someone's descent into madness. The writer spoke of isolation, of being hunted by unseen forces, and encountering strange, shadowy figures lurking in the woods. The entries grew more erratic and paranoid as they went on, culminating in an ominous warning. They are coming for me. I can't escape. They will find me. Our unease deepened and the hairs on the back of our necks stood on end. This journal, while unsettling, shed no light to the identity of the victim or the killer. We decided to gather the journal, along with a few other items, to bring back as evidence once we reached civilization. As we made our way back to the victim's body, a distant sound caught our attention a low, mournful howling that echoed through the forest. It was a chilling sound, one that sent shivers down our spines. We strained to locate the source, but the trees concealed it. With a sense of urgency, we realized that we needed to leave this place. The howling grew louder, closer, and our instinct screamed at us to flee. John grabbed my hand and we hurried back to our horses, leaving the gruesome scene behind. The ride back to our camp was tense and fraught with fear. Every shadow, every rustle in the underbrush made our hearts race. We couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched and that something bad lurked in the shadows of the forest. That night, we huddled together in our tent, the events of the day were playing in our minds. The journal's ominous words haunted our thoughts and the distance howling continued, an eerie lullaby that prevented us from finding rest. The next morning, we packed up our camp and began the long journey back to civilization. The forest seemed to release its grip on us slowly, the sense of foreboding fading with every step. 
We never did encounter the source of the howling, nor did we uncover the full truth of what happened in those woods. To this day, the memory of the gruesome discovery haunts us, a dark mystery that remains unsolved. We may never know who the victim was, who the writer of the journal had been, or what transpired in those remote woods. But one thing is for certain, our idyllic horseback camping trip had transformed into a harrowing journey into the heart of darkness, an experience that would forever linger in our nightmares.